Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. It's another week and I have to get something else out of the emergency storage shed. Let's go and have a look at how far we've got and what are we going to do today. Now there hasn't been much happening in the rest of the shed for a while. I mean there's lots going on. I'm always doing things. But the bulk of the background you see whenever I film is much the same. So I do need to start tackling these piles of things at some stage. But let's get back to this shed. And you can see after removing the large box last week. We are starting to open up a little bit of an area here. Um, this little corner, I've just propped a ladder there. I'll probably find somewhere to hang that up. I've got some uh, short offcuts of timber there that I've been using for um, when I've been spray painting like the table reno and that sort of stuff. So they're handy and they can stay there for now. I've also decided that my clamps can go up the top there just for the moment because they're easy access and they're out of the road. So they'll probably find a better home later on once the shed's more organized. So what's next? I think we kind of need to keep getting stuff off the top because that's in danger of falling. Um, but we can access this bucket now. This is probably the closest to the door. I haven't looked in it. You can see it hasn't been moved for a while. They're real genuine spider webs. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be scrap metal in here or tools or stuff out of my old shed. It's oh, it's pretty heavy. Let's take it through to the workbench and we'll go through that. And if it's a quick job, we might maybe look at getting one of these milk crates or maybe the box from up the top there and possibly even that milk crate. Depends how long they are. I like to make my videos, you know, not too short, but long enough that you can sit down and have a cuppa. Let's get into this bucket first. Now, I have resisted the urge to peek in here. And we get a little spider, a little money spider. That's a good sign. I reckon if you see a little money spider, money's going to come your way. Um, I've resisted the urge to look. It could be just scrap metal. It might be pretty boring, but it's got a bit of weight to it. It might be old tools. I honestly have no idea. Let's get in there without harming the money spider. Oh, lid stuck. Oh, okay. It's... Yeah, a little bit of a mixture. Possibly some scrap metal. Um, that looks like some sort of puller. There's an old Ford hubcap, a nice early one. That'll be a saleable piece. Looks like a drill bit. There's not a lot of stuff, but we've got a really nice mixture. So let's just pull it out while we're here now and see if we can establish what we're going to do with things. Well, this is definitely a puller. And it's missing the threaded bolt through the middle but it's for pulling from the inside of something so you've got the two uh sort of little latch things here that that get behind something so maybe inside a large bearing or a large pulley or something and you can obviously adjust this to spread them out so they jam tightly and then you'd somehow need to get a bolt through the middle uh, it's probably a specialised tool, but it may have a use. It's sort of a tool that, if you need one, it's worth an absolute fortune because there's often no other way of getting something off unless you've got a tool like this. I'm going to keep it because it possibly could be useful. It's um, certainly going to be a good quality piece and possibly could be modified to do a job in the future. I think that's going to be worthwhile keeping for now. Uh, it is adjustable, as you can see. So, all right, I don't know what value I'd put on that if I was going to sell it. Probably $20 or $30. I don't know if there's a brand on it. There is a brand on it. Or at least a number. So maybe I'll do a bit of research and see what it suits. Okay, now we have a Ford uh, hubcap. It's probably a fairly early one. It's fairly light, but I think it would be uh, nickel plated brass it's a little bit dented there let's check the magnet yeah it's not metallic I mean it's not ferrous so it's probably brass but there's not a lot of weight in there and I would never scrap something like that we, it would only be worth a matter of cents to scrap whereas that's going to be at least a $10 piece in the shop maybe even a little bit more I don't know what model it's off but it's a fairly early Ford hubcap we'll clean that up and see what it looks like the big piece of brass in here is a foot valve. 
uh, with a screen. The screen's obviously had it at the bottom. It's solid brass, Southern Cross. Uh, they made windmills, so it's possibly off a windmill pickup. I think Southern Cross Auto made engines and pumps and things, early farm stuff, Australian made. Uh, the question is, is that going to have more value as a Southern Cross uh, foot valve or just for brass? We'll weigh it up and see what the brass weighs out at, but I reckon we'd get more money because that's actually branded. We would get more money in the shop for what it actually is as a collectible, or even if someone was restoring an old Southern Cross pump, it's a great go with. Looks like about a two inch pipe diameter. It's still got the actual valve flap in there. So we'll weigh it and see what it's worth as brass, but I'm pretty sure we'll probably just buff that up and sell it. Price wise, well, we'll wait and see how well it cleans up. Okay, we have a nice long drill bit here. I'm certainly going to keep that because I'm often, if I'm doing some large timber work like um, sleepers for landscaping or something and you need to drill a, a hole through it, quite often a normal drill set just won't, aren't long enough. So that's a nice long drill bit. We have a coal chisel well used look at how it's mushroomed around the top these actually become dangerous when they get to this stage because a really sharp thump with a hammer can actually send a fragment flying off into your shins or you know a bit of shrapnel quite dangerous it does need grinding back to be able to be used it's pretty rusty uh, i don't think it's really worth the effort to go and save i can't see any brands on it so i might just put that in my heavy melt steel <clears throat> or I do have a box at the shop for a dollar each it's not going to be a dollar's worth of scrap steel so we'll put it in the one dollar box these are interesting these are very fine spring loaded they're almost like circlet pliers they open out as you squeeze now I think there's a name on them so we'll buff those up they will be saleable for sure I'm not sure of their exact use these ones are just a pair of tin snips, a bit surface rusty, but actually still feel okay. I think they might be branded, so they will buff up fine and we'll be able to sell those. And I think this is a, a mortar chisel for chiseling out mortar around bricks. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's certainly like hit it with a hammer and chisel something. But I think it's for breaking out mortar or maybe masonry work, stonework. Uh, I'll buff that one up as well. I think that's better value as the item rather than it is for scrap steel. Here's some really, really cute trimmers. They should have a spring in there. And they're a bit seized up. Oh no, there we go. So they're just like tin snips, I guess. And I think they'll buff up as well. We might even be find, able to find a, a spring in there for them. They possibly will be branded as well. So again, they should be saleable. A standard everyday pad bolt. Well, I do sell these uh, and I use a few. I don't have a use for any at the moment. And I don't think I need to save these. I'll have these in the shop. If I ever need one, I'll go to the shop and grab it. Uh, probably only a couple of dollars. And just a little hook, which we, we have a box of hooks at the shop and we hang things off the old ladders from the ceiling. So that's useful. There we go. End of the bucket. I think I might buff all these things up on my wire wheel. We'll give the Ford hubcap a bit of a polish. And I'll get back to you and show you what they all look like. Righto, I've done some cleaning. I've got my notepad ready. But let me show you the major benefit of this job. As I had a bit of buffing to do, I finally dragged all the rubbish away from my pedestal grinder here. And I had bought this wire wheel, I reckon, over 12 months ago. And this is the first time I've used it. So admittedly, it's a little temporary there. I still have to make up a bracket to bolt the grinder to the base. This base is something I picked up years ago when I was buying a lot of scrap metal. And it's a very heavy cast iron, looks like a reducer from, I don't know, some fairly serious uh, waterworks in installation. But it turned up in the scrap metal. I took it home thinking that'll be a handy stand for something one day. And there you go. The one day has come. Uh, so that's I'm really pleased I've got that sorted out. I can I've freed up some room on the wall there. I can start hanging some tools, maybe putting a little shelf up. Now that I've got the buffing wheel set up there, it's so much better than the little setup I had in the drill. Plus that was really only a temporary measure. 
uh, and it was always a hassle because I wanted to use the vice and the drill was in it. But this goes great. It runs well. I've even got a grinding wheel the other side. It's just an old one, but it's going to be um, still useful. So I'll just have to work out a bracket for that and bolt that down at some stage. But until I get around to that, the G-clamps work fine. Okay, back to our goodies. You can see how well the foot valve buffed up. The brass does buff up very nicely. It's made that quite a presentable piece. Um, and we'll talk about the values of that shortly. Let's start down the other end. Okay, I'll see if I can remember what I found out. I've done some Googling. I didn't make any notes. Uh, this puller, it did have a brand on it. It was, it's actually, I think in the, the company is now OTC. They're uh, US made. And the original name, I think, was Awatona Tool Company. It was in Minnesota. So it's quite a nice piece. It's a quality puller. I'm not sure if this had other legs for it. It probably did. And even this on its own will be a handy puller, but I do need to find a forcing screw for it. But I will keep this because it will have multiple uses and I could even make up new legs for it to suit certain applications as I do a few more mechanical jobs once my workshop gets set up properly. Value-wise, I'd probably sell that at about $25 as it is, but I think it's going to be more useful for me here. Uh, I even cleaned up the drill, and now that I've got that buffing wheel set up, it's so much easier just to clean things up. These pliers are a Herbrand, uh, number 185. I thought they may have been specialised tools, like for brake calipers or something, but I found actually found an early advert for these on Google, and the first line was something like, these are exceptionally handy in the workshop. Uh, they might have even used the word extraordinarily handy. Uh, and based on that, I thought I'm going to keep them. What's the point of selling them for $10 when they might be really handy? And I've even got a screw here just to show you how nice they work for reaching in awkward places. Because they're spring-loaded the opposite way to normal pliers, they hold themselves. I reckon they will be worth their weight in gold for fiddly little jobs. So I'm keeping those, but value would have been about $10. Onto the stuff I'm selling, uh, I just checked to see if there was a brand name on the Cold chisel wall, I had the buffer going, but I couldn't see anything, so that's just going to be in the $1 box. $2 for the pad bolt, as suggested. The little trimmers, uh, cutters cleaned up really nicely. I just peened the rivet over a little bit more, and they work really nicely. You can feel the guillotining action. They will cut really well. I haven't found a spring for them yet. I'm sure I've got one in a box at the shop. Uh, $10 on those, easily. I think they look great now. The tin snips cleaned up well, too. They're English made, um, and they're quite sharp as well. So I think it says all steel, but it does say made in England on the centre pivot there. So we'll get 10 for those as well. Uh, and this one, I was right with being a, a mortar chisel. I think they're called a plugging chisel, but they're basically for masonry or brickwork or for you know, chiseling out mortar. There is a name on it, and I think it says cook, but I couldn't make it out. Uh, I think we'll just put five on that, but certainly much better than scrap metal value. The hub cap, I did a bit of researching trying to find out what model it was off. I couldn't find the exact cap. You can see it cleaned up fairly well, but it has a few dints and bruises to it. And I suspect it's actually stainless steel rather than nickel-plated brass, but it's certainly non-magnetic. Uh, I suspect it's probably a Model A Ford. I don't think it's a Model T, and it may have been on a wire wheel type car. So probably 1930s sometime. Uh, even beaten up, I'm going to get $10 for that without a problem. Now, the foot valve. Uh, I'll get the scales up here and show you what it weighs. It's quite heavy and it's solid brass. Even the wire mesh is actually brass. And we've almost got four kilos. So four kilos of solid brass at the moment. It's nearly $8 a kilo again. The price has come back up. There's about $32 worth of scrap brass. So that gives me a good guide to pricing it for the shop. Basically, I'm going to put $50 on it, um, and if anyone wants to haggle too much, it's just a matter of saying, look, mate, I can get you know nearly $35 from the scrapyard. So I reckon, I reckon it'll sell for $50, and it looks great now that it's polished up. Brass does buff up very easily, has a nice gloss to it. It highlights the name Southern Cross, which is upside down there, but nice piece. I reckon $50. So that brings us to the notepad. 
Uh, for one little bucket of stuff, what I'm going to be selling is almost $90 worth of things. And I think that's very realistic prices. Um, the things I'm keeping, approximate values there, uh, which gives us a total value in the box, well, the bucket, of $125. So it just shows you where the value can be hiding. And again, there's no rubbish. I suspect this was actually unpacked from my old shed behind the shop and someone who was helping me may have just thrown these in a box or in the bucket i don't remember doing it but i would never have remembered i owned any of this stuff so there we go nice little bonus so that didn't take too long to go through or maybe it did i tend to talk a lot and i haven't edited it so i'm not sure how long this video is going to be but let's go and have a sneaky look back in the shed and see if there's something else we can grab okay a bit of a bonus for this video what else can we get um, actually this cord here it's an old extension cord it's a very old style and I have lots of extension cords at the moment and I think we can just scrap that one so that can go in our copper wire insulator wire bin so there's something else out of the shed but I want to get that timber box from up the top I have no idea what's in it so let's see if we can get that down and we'll have a quick peek in there oh it's actually marked copper it's got a bit of weight to it I hope I don't drop it on my head. And what's in it? Oh, it's certainly not copper. Okay, there um, looks like spout brackets, spouting brackets. And these are like for, for rafter attaching, I don't know what they're called. They're brackets, they're galvanised iron brackets. Oh, look, it's called a joist hanger. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I have used those before. They're actually quite handy. Uh, I'm not... Oh, look, I'm not sure. I don't think I need to keep the spouting hangers. I'm not going to do any spouting work, but I may keep these because I do intend on making a bit of a woodshed out the back of this shed. And that's the easiest way just to hang joists. Back on the bench now, and let's see how many there are. Um, okay, there's a few of them. And clearly these have never been used. So we'll keep those ones. I don't want the spout hangers. I'm not going to be doing any spouting. And if I need any spouts done, I'm going to call our local plumber. So they can go to the shop. Uh, we have, what's at the bottom here? That's a light fitting of some sort. We have some nuts and bolts. Well, they can go in a jar here, always looking for nuts and bolts. We have, whoa, we're in the money, 50 cents. There's a door keeper bracket and a door stop and another door stop. Okay, now to finalize things here, uh, the door stop and the light fitting, which is a brand new one. Uh, it's a ceramic one. It's not the sort I use for lamps. Uh, they can both go in this box to go to the shop. They're just gonna go in the $1 each pile. The spout hangers I will leave in this box and I'll probably put $5 in the lot and I think there's some more at the shop in the storeroom at the back so I can just add to that until it sells. Uh, we will load up the rest of this stuff to go to the shop as well and I'll price it all out uh, when I'm there next, which will be Friday. So that gets all that stuff out of here. Uh, the joist hangers I have put in a box here and we can put them uh, up on the top shelf. They can go up there for now out of the road and labelled. While we're allocating things, the nuts and bolts can go in there. The doorkeeper is clean brass, I've checked it, and I've got plenty of those, so that can just go in the scrap bin. This other door stop is actually just missing the main part of it, and that's just the mounting part, and that was a plastic bag that had the nuts and bolts in. They can just go in the bin. I don't have uh, anywhere to put them, and I don't think they'll sell. This stuff's staying here, so I've got a spot for my drill bits just over here. Oh, look, it's starting to get organised. Oh, the hook has to go to the shop as well. These are going into my other workshop because they will be, I'm sure they'll be very handy. I'll be no doubt praising its usefulness next time I'm doing a video in there. I don't have anywhere to put the puller at the moment, but it's certainly something that I have to have. Uh, in fact, I do have some other pullers. I've got a hydraulic puller somewhere I remember from years ago. That's yet to be found. All right, they can just go under the workbench for now, even though there's not much room. That old extension cord with the plugs cut off is 
pretty much almost half a kilo. So at the moment we're getting about $4 a kilo for insulated wire. So $2. More in the scrap kitty. The plugs can go in the e-waste bucket, which I do have to empty very soon. And that gives us a clean bench for the next project, a box of stock for the shop, and another video completed. And, most importantly, part of my workshop, a bit more functional. So guys, that was one small bucket for man, one giant leap for mankind, well, one giant leap for the ultimate recycler. As far as getting my shed a little bit more productive, I was wrapped to get a bit of stuff organized over there, made some more space, even got a bonus box out of the emergency store shed. So another successful episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.